and I hope people enjoy the podcast. But don't forget, you've got to enjoy it, but enjoy it by being disciplined. Hello, welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch, Notorious, uh, and the BBQC uh, with me. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a new nickname for the no, new No, not really. No, no, <laughs> because, want... no, because if you think about it, since this podcast has been created years ago now, um, we've more. gone through several nicknames, it's haven't we? It's a new year we? though, isn't it? You know, like what? What do you want? No, I don't no. think you can do it. I think you just got to let evolution do its thing. Okay, all right, all right. This year, all stuff right. will happen, won't it? We will all do things Why that I one can I shudder to think what, you know... Think about last year, you know, mm. I know we've been through it, but, you know, the, mm. the, the, the M&S ad with the puddings, yeah. you know, obviously the Notorious Cunt, SID. Yeah. 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 Crouch know, Fest, stuff to Crouch Elton. Fest, Elton. Everything. It's, uh, it's exciting because it's, an, it's the start of a new year. Um, there's so much more to come. And I look ahead to this year as well. This is a year that is going to have the Euros, mm. Olympics in France, which no one's really talking about at the no. moment, but that's going to feel like a home Olympics, I would think, mm. just because of how close it is. Um, and then we've got the normal summer, Wimbledon, uh, you know, Grand Prix, everything that comes with that. Brilliant. Feels like we've got a big summer of sport ahead, but it feels quite far off in the distance, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember getting as a player, you got into January and it was that little grind, wasn't it? And before you know it, it was March and then it was the end of season. So I think bef- like, like this, where this podcast goes, before, uh, yeah, the, and I think before putting... the season's out, it's this, there's going to be some crazy stuff that's going to be happening. Yeah. Well, we've talked about maybe looking at the Euros as, you know, where we go with the puddings. It, it, it's got to be, hasn't it? Homecoming. Homecoming. The Euros, isn't it? Surely. And also, what are we going to do as a podcast for the Euros? You know what I mean? What, this is it. We've, we, we should be across that. Mm. Yeah. I feel like we're a football podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the truth of this is we're looking at the Euros literally this second and going... Oh yeah, the Euros like, should do something. We should probably do something. <laughs> yeah. We'll organise. You know what? Things happen, and 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 we yeah. don't know how they do. So let's see. How, we'll see where we go with that. Yeah. Yeah. And today is another example of amazing things happening. Neil Wall is a guest that we've wanted on for a long, long time. Um, you know, we I've played against him uh, as a player. So yeah. so Sid's his teams were so hard to play against. Yeah, I'm a bit confused about this one because my only experience of Neil Warnock, I don't know if you boys are different, I don't know your personal relationships with him, is just shouting abuse at him from the stands. Mm. I, I remember being uh, in the in the rookery end at Watford and absolutely hating the guy. So it's a really odd one for me, this one, because I understand some of it's panto, yeah. and some of it's maybe just a reputation. I'm intrigued to know what he's really like as a person. Mm. I think from the outside, uh, it'd be up there as probably one of the most hated men in football, isn't it? So it'd be mm. good to divulge and get to know him personally because they're the ones that you end up going, do you know what? I'd actually quite like to play for him. 100%. You know but also, mean? that's changed full circuit, it feels like, since he's kind of... It's now, you know, this modern era of, like, social media and, and, and with the documentary kind of coming back out again. It was like, back then, it was like, oh, yeah, he's got a bit old school yeah. and he got a little bit of criticism for that maybe but now people love it you know yeah. when you look at the video of comparing him and Guardiola and the different things they say you know some of the quotes like you've got to die for the three points <laughs> you know the, 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 that, that's for Kevin Musk at his argument with the referees yeah. you know his persona off the field now is is, is, is a good one yeah you and know, we do say this we, we and we keep throwing this out there let us know who you'd like on the podcast and a lot of people put this name forward so I'm pleased we could find it because I think we tried this a few months ago and for whatever reason he, he wasn't on but New Year's Treat 2024 starting well with mm. uh, a, a good chat with Neil Warnock coming up and I'm really intrigued to see what he's take his uh, on referees nowadays and uh, and VAR and wow. the modern game that's you know well listen without further ado why don't get into Neil Warnock Welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. Got a notorious SID uh, with me here, and, and Chris Stark, and a very special guest, someone we've won on for a long, a long time, mm. uh, legend of the game, uh, Mr. Neil Warnock. Good morning, lads. Nice to see you. How's your time been in London? It's good. I, I love coming to London. I, I love managing. I mean, I, I, when I was at Sheffield, I used to think. If I ever manage below Watford, I know a chance. It's the pitch. 
That's what I used to think, honestly. <laughs> and then Simon Jordan, when I left Sheffield United, yeah. come and have a talk, you know, and ended up at Palace and Cupid. Mm. Best days of my life, nearly. Mm. I didn't realise how good it is. I mean, mm. I could. You people watch all day, don't yeah. you? And I used to go down to Shepherd's Market there and just sit with a coffee and mm. you never saw an English person from all over the world and mm. the buildings and all that lot. And we went to the Jersey Boys last night. That's the only reason I did this show. Mm. <laughs> so I could take the mistress to Jersey Boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, appreciate, yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. I thought you were a huge fan. No, you know? <laughs> That's actually very relatable, Neil, because with this podcast, we say to our wives that we're working uh, and then we come here and often we have a few beers or we mm. go out, or wh whatever it is that we do. So the idea that you've had to, to do this podcast, but the Jersey Boys... Um, as a sort of date night, it's something we've all had to, to do. Absolutely, and I've got to say, it was a most amazing... I saw it a few years ago, but Luke, the singer in it, I don't know how he does it. I mean, the voice is unbelievable. I, I, I thought it were amazing. I, I, I standing up, clapping and all that. Are you with me? I just thought it was... A, and that's what, for me, London is. It's something different, isn't it? You go to a club like that, mm. and then we thought, we'll go and have a walk and have a drink after... We went to Covent Garden. We couldn't get a bloody drink anywhere. Mm. So you'll have to tell me where you go. <laughs> Neil, if you, if you don't like a musical, do you bollock them at half time? Or if, I, if I what? If you don't like a musical, do you bollock them at half time? No, no, no. You usually just walk out. Just. <laughs> <laughs> So I, what, so I only, you know, you got this, this, this rude word you've just used. Then Sorry. I only get, I only lose my temper in football occasionally. When people let me down, and they don't let me down so often, I don't. I don't. I mean, you look at the YouTubes and things, and everything I'm ranting about, everything. You don't see the good bits where I knock on the referee door and tell him how good he's been. That's not. That's not viable, is it? That you true. only want the nasty ones. And that's true. Don't you? Well, Neil, so what, what are you up to these days? Obviously, you know, the career spanning, you know, from 1980, I think, I it was the yeah. first job, wasn't yeah. it? And as a manager, and are you enjoying what you we are up to now? Yeah, I mean. I've really enjoyed over the last few years. I've, I've sort of, they've sort of, before your time, they read a dare, but they sort of brought me in to to crucial situations where I started at Rotherham, I think with 12, 15 games to go, trying to ke keep them in the division, which we did. Then Cardiff, uh, and then managed to get Cardiff promoted. Um, and then Huddersfield last last year, really, was it, we're in a bit of a mess. So I've enjoyed the challenges, are you with me? But even talking to you guys now, I'm just saying to Steve, you don't realise till you're not in football what you miss. You miss the banter. I don't miss the games. I miss the day-to-day, -day, you know, because I always, you know, like I'd said to City, what's your grandmother wearing today? Are you with me? If I was wearing, you know, if I was in, if he walked in like that and he, would, <laughs> and, and he was playing... And he was playing for me. Are you with me? If he was playing for I'm, me. I'm totally with you The worst you, thing Neil. is you bypassed me. I've got the cardigan on. <laughs> hey, I haven't got to you yet. <laughs> You're buzzing with that. Absolutely uh, buzzing. Me okay. and Neil were bonding. Yeah, in, in actual fact, these two have a little bit of, uh, they've had a bit of friction all throughout the podcast about what each other wears. So right. uh, he's very pleased that you've, you've come yeah, for him. Thank you, Neil. Okay, well, I Luke. appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So, so what's your one. experience with the boys? Just from the outside here, looking at this, what, what's them? Um, what's been your experience with Crouchy and and Sids? Did you ever try and sign either of them? Yeah, or? yeah, I tried to sign. I think I even talked about Sidia mm. as well at one stage. Uh, I mean, I mean, Steve, we've we, I've always had a banter with Reading, mm. Reading fans. If you look back at my career, some of the best games of my life, and you know, sending off a couple of times, you know, Reading has always been special been that, that their fans have you know give me a stick but i think they re, uh, sort of appreciated me as well are you with me yeah. so we've always had a banter like that and with peter i always thought peter was um because of his size and his gangliness i didn't think he got enough credit for what he did i, I tried to sign him at sheffield me um and i was disappointed when he didn't come off but but I'm 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 pleased about his what he did and and how far he went because you know when he first come into it there was doubts about this that and the other are you with me mm. and I think it's the same with Steve or myself there's always doubts about you and you have to prove to yourself that you're good enough and and I think both these lads have done really well in the career. Do you remember that, Pete? Yeah, I do, and I think it was around kind of 2000, 2001 and I remember playing against your Sheffield United team and Sean Derry is a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny Butterfield, yeah, and those yeah. obviously good mates with him. Obviously that team, you had Paddy Kenny, uh, Jack Yoka. Um, it was a tough team to play against. Yeah. Would you would you say that's kind of your favourite time? Because I, I remember when I played against that team, I remember right in the corner, Paul Devlin, 
he, he's gone straight through <laughs> me. I think it was possibly the worst tackle <laughs> yeah, I've ever probably. had experienced on me in the corner. I think yeah. I was trying to take the piss a little bit. And he yeah. went, hey, and he was a winger. I used to, <laughs> I used to love him. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And I, but that was a hard yeah, team. Keith Curl, um, oh, you know, a few, few players in there. And what, you know, did you, when you were recruiting players, did you... Was it was it something that you want, where you wanted them to be you know have that kind of character? Where they were I think it's just stuff. as a manager you you get labelled. I don't think you, as a manager you, you don't go to a club and say we're going to play like this. What you do is you go to a club and you look at what you've got and you work out a system to suit what you've got. Really, mm. uh, the other way around I think is idiotic. Really, so every club I've been. We've had some sort of a basis and what have you. But ironically enough, I was saying to Peter before, and he must be a good striker because I didn't sign him. And I've not had mean? any luck at all. <laughs> I've not had any luck at all with strikers. Oh, so you can't, you struggle to sign <gasps> oh, dear, my what strikers. you'd call good strikers? Yeah, I've, I've spent money left, right and centre. I've never, my, my strikers have been terrible. My goalkeepers, <laughs> my goalkeepers and my centre-halves in my career have been excellent. I've had some of the best goalies and best centre-halves ever. Uh, but I've always struggled with strikers for some reason. Why do you so, think that is? I don't know. I don't know. It's just, uh, I honestly don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've took players, strikers that were sc scoring goals and then couldn't score a goal. Are you with me? With me. So whether it was the way I play or anything, but it's just, it, it's for some reason, I've never been able to get like a 20 goal a season or anybody really on. So I, I, Sheffield, I got Hulse, Rob Hulse. And then, yeah. he, as he were doing really well, he broke his leg, mm. yeah. you know. And uh, so you were curse for strikers, do you think, or do you think strikers just can't meet your standards? Which way around? No, is I don't think. I think it's a bit of both, really. Yeah. I, I do think it's a little bit of luck, a bit of magic, yeah. you know. Certain players fit a system. Peter will have played with wide players that were unbelievable. He'll have played with wide players that couldn't pass a ball, couldn't cross mm. a ball. Mm. So I think it's a matter of just being in the right place at the right time as well. And I've been lucky. I mean, every club I've had, I've been to, because of, I was only, like, fourth division standard as a player, are you with me? But Kevin Randall, my old mate, said, you're the only guy I know, Warney, who's made a success out of being a failure. <laughs> and uh, I know you have to think about that. You can see the brains in here then, can't you? They were all thinking, what's it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it, it was one of them things I thought, well, I've, if I'm going to go to the top, I've got to be a manager really and I enjoyed managing even the Sunday league when I first come to the end of my playing career are you with me and then do you mean to be good in football to be to to you love the game but to have a role in football you realized pretty quickly wasn't going to be a player the next mm. best thing in your opinion was to be a manager yeah absolutely I mean I was a Amazing. I was a brainless winger I was quick and I was direct and I enjoyed it and I think that's why I always give benefit of doubt to me forwards now if Peter played for me he would have loved it because I always could still trying to buy you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm but sold. I, but I, he would. I would. I've always um, love a winger taking men on or somebody running at people. I've because I, I'm excited by that as a as a manager. And because when we're in training, I always say anybody could be a centre half. You're only going to stop him playing. You're only going to do that. You know, get it. You know. And so I always look after me forwards in training and give the centre halves and a lot of stick really and the full backs. Mm -hmm. So uh, just quickly off the subject, yeah. Peter. Danny Butterfield. Yeah. Right, so is it, we're at QPR, Danny Butterfield. And uh, I don't know what it were, but Sharon, one morning, says to me something oh, about yeah. Did you hear about it? I've heard this. The dream. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard she, this. She, yeah. said, <laughs> she, this she, she says to me, Danny, I had, a, I had a dream last night about Danny Butterfield. I said, bloody, and what <laughs> was that about, love? She says, he scored that trick. I said, you what? He scored that trick, she said. And anyhow... <laughs> We had a few injuries further on, and I shoved Danny Butterfield in the team, and he got hat trick. So now that is so, I, so that, I, is, I, that is weird, I heard isn't it? This was because yeah. Danny Butterfield is not a centre; he's a fullback. He's yeah. never so been. He's never played there before. Or no, after, he's really. never been in the box. <laughs> <laughs> he's never been in the opponent's box before. Has he? So I'm glad you brought this up because I I wasn't sure I was going to ask you this, but yeah. I thought it's so far fetched. I this know. Can't be true. I know. That really happened. Yeah, yeah. really happened. Uh, Unbelievable. And and Danny, I mean, when he scored his third goal, he come up and give me a kiss and all that. And we're all high five. And none of us could believe it. But I didn't tell the lads that at the time. I just said I'd got an intuition, you know. I took all the credit for it, you know. So what but, does Sharon say when you get home? So I told you. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But it's just one of them one of them weird things. Did Sharon suggest any other changes? Any other dreams that didn't no, come as no, well? No. 
So she's just gone in one decision, hat trick, <laughs> and then retired. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it the next day. Let me just make sure we had a lot of problems injury wise. Are you yeah. with me? And Danny, in fairness, he were always buzzing. You know what it's like. Goalkeepers think they're centre forwards, don't they? In training, they all think they should be up front. Centre half think they're centre forwards. Mm. So you get a little bit of that. And he was he was good at finishing. And the mm. thing, and it was just one of them things. We were short of players. And I shoved him up, and and, and that, that was the answer like that. But it was a he was a lovely lad. But like you said at Sheffield United, we had a grouper. Yeah. You wouldn't want to play against us. No. That's why we used to love it with Reading. Because they, have, we they, you were similar. Yeah. You were similar, weren't yeah. you, Steve? I actually Redding. don't think I lost. I didn't lose a game against Sheffield United. I won you know, enough every game from when I signed for Reading, and then when I left that five six years. We used to like go toe to toe. Oh. Was there? You had sort of uh, Chris Morgan at the back. Oh, I know. David Unsworth, Chris Morgan, yeah. Jags, <laughs> yeah. um, Tongi, uh, Michael Brown. Yeah. Yeah. I think you had Carlos Saab at one point. Yeah. And, um, yeah it, the list goes on, and you knew it was like it was going to be. And was, I remember I the big one, wasn't it? At, at the Medeski at Reading. I remember putting a sub on ten minutes to go, and I, I can't remember who we were now. And uh, his first. He went on, the ball come to their Reading player, and he just kicked him up there and got sent off within 10 seconds of coming on. Can't remember who it was. That was Keith it's Gillespie. The big you were talking Keith about. Keith Gillespie. Yeah. It were Keith Gillespie. Yeah, it was, yeah. You know, I'm international player. Yeah, that was the brawl, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the, uh, I said, Keith, Keith, what did you do yeah. that for? But, you know, just kicked him up in air and got sent off. It was one of the, I think it was one of the eras, wasn't it, where we was always there or thereabouts of going up, us two, wasn't it? And mm. then we never quite got there. And then no. in, in the end, we both, we both, did we it, both we? went up at the same time. You got time. over 100 points. Mm. I yeah, think we that did, is. yeah. We was, we, was actually yeah. In, um, we was actually in Marbella at the same time, in the season trip, mm. Sheffield United and, um, yeah. and Reading. And all the players we met down at Plaza Beach, because we got on with them, you know, away from the game. And we was there, Plaza Beach, during the day, and we was just going for it, like two tables next to each other. And we left, and we put all our bill on their bill. <laughs> <laughs> you did well. You did well there. Oh. Hey, who, was the, who was the winger, the Irish winger? Stephen Hunt. Yeah, what a little nasty, horrible man. <laughs> <laughs> what a... And uh, and he hey, and he texted me a few weeks ago. Well, I said, he's an agent he's now. He's an agent, yeah. I thought... It can't be him that's text me. <laughs> Hiya, Neil, how are you? <laughs> Do you find that you're hey, having this? But, but I say uh, what I said about him, but yeah. I'd, have, I'd have him in my team. Of course yeah. you would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is it. Do you find now that you're doing some stuff outside of uh, of just the game, do you find that you're you're sort of reuniting with people that you might have had feuds with or, oh, yeah. or, or ding-dongs with yeah. on the pitch? And Up to a point, there's one or two I wouldn't, you know, if, if they were on fire. Uh, <laughs> but... But mo majority, yeah. Mo yeah. Most, I mean, it's like my lads, really. You, you've seen all the rollickings I've given out and things like that. But when I give a rollicking out, whether it's half time or end of the game, I'll go and do the press. Mm. And then half an hour, I come back in, it's gone. I never, ever yeah. let things dwell. Mm. I don't think about, I've just given him a rollicking and a larry. Whereas when I was a manager, Jim Eiley managed me, a, a, a really good player he was, and he managed. But if he... Give you a roller, he wouldn't talk to you for three weeks. Mm. Mm. Are you with me? Mm. I don't, I've never been like that. I've always thought I'm, a, I'd rather be a player's manager. And I think if you ask the teams that I played for, the, the players have quite enjoyed playing. So I think we just yeah. got that insight, didn't we, from the, the videos that we saw? Where it, it just so happens that you were being filmed on that. The boys here, I'm sure you've experienced this, it's kind of normal actually. It's just, yeah, yeah. So, so how, did, how did you find that, Neil? So, obviously, you know, you're, you're a manager with your, with your own style, and then obviously, you, you filmed, and then like the stuff that obviously is filmed, you see to this day, and it comes back, and yeah, that's almost made you kind of, I don't know, people love you for it. I know, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I'm more popular than I was in 10 or 15 <laughs> years ago. I think I've done better. I went to the Open last year in the golf at St. Andrews, and I was up on 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 the between the seventeenth and eighteenth or sixteenth, seventeenth. So I saw the coming down the fairway and then teeing off around the hotel. And because after every uh, group had come, they let uh, groups of fans across. Are you with me? Yeah. And every time there were groups of lads and they saw me, everyone would shout up, "You've got to die for three points!" <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, yeah, I know, I, I know. And there was an expletive in there, but I didn't sure. I didn't use that on Crouch's show. Oh. <laughs> But it's so many great quotes, isn't there? You know, like that you've said. And obviously, I don't know if you've seen the one where they compare it to Guardiola and all that. But it's, That's I mean, funny, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. great. I mean, Have you seen it? 
Yeah. yeah. You brilliant. mean the other way around? You yeah. Yeah. To me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, you know, I mean, it's just, it, 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 I think it's made you kind of someone really, really loved in the game. And I think yeah. without that, although, you know, it was, it was a fly on the wall documentary, it's, it's kind of come back in, 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 in the century. You know, I just think, I just think, now. I think there's so many drab people in football. There's so many managers with the clipboards and there's so many this, that and the other and what have you. And I don't think there's enough laughter. I think I like to make people laugh at the right time. Are you with me? And I like me lads to, you know, Paddy McNair, when I left Middlesbrough, I spoke to him and, and he said to me, Gaffer, can I just say, I've never ever looked forward to getting out of bed as much to come training. Mm. And for me, the lads will tell you that's the biggest compliment I could get. Are you with me? Because mm. I know what he meant. Because you build, you build a dressing room like that. Are you with me? So, yeah. And, so let's not down to more so to tactics. Because I, I remember that your teams and that it was, and probably the why you were successful in terms of the players was because everything you probably stripped to basics. You didn't com, you didn't confuse players. It yeah. was just go out there, give it hundred percent. This is what we do. We get the ball. Like get it. Why get crosses in? Regain. Do you know I mean, do you put, get a tackle in. That, uh, just strip it back to basic. As was. a player, that's that's all you can ask for, rather than the tactics and this and that uh, overcomplicating things. Well, I laugh. I laugh now. Nowadays, you know, you watched the worst game in football ever, didn't you, the other day? Man oh, United, Liverpool. Such a disappointment. Now I watched that game, me, and I'm I'm sitting here thinking, if you were Man United. Why don't you goal kicks? Why don't you take him to the big striker on the halfway line and then win the second balls? I couldn't understand how they kept taking short goal kicks and losing it. Mm. 25 yards from goals, I thought, this is not not rocket science, this. So I, I just think you get a bit confused about this lovely game of football. Are you with me? Mm. I've been replaced with managers in the past few years and because they want to play this great foot game of football. Are you with me? Attacking style and all that lot. But it, I think sometimes it's it's... It, they go the other way, really, and they pass it for the sake of it now. You know, well, every team's got a pass from the goal. Uh, yeah, they, they, they do, it seems to. But, you know, obviously, you know, we know, obviously, your, you know, your style, style of football. Is, you know, you, I don't think anyone's had as many promotions as you, which is an incredible achievement. Um, but how did you deal with players like, for instance, one springs to mind, Adele Terraps, right? I, oh. I read a story that you... You, you find people if they gave him the ball in yeah. his own half. It was a. Is that right? Yeah, I mean Harry Harry Redknapp was. The, he had him at Tottenham and. Tell I, the boy, I was there at the. Was well, I took him. I player. took him on loan, and uh, and Harry, uh, he, I remember him saying to me, "You not get out of him, you know." When I took over at Pal at QPR, so we have a practice the first day in training. I always had pads on me. Mm. Put your pads on. I want to see who's gonna who's gonna tackle, who's gonna edit first day, me and anybody shirks and all. So we're doing this, and it's in the middle of summer. Not summer, but it was a warm day. Sorry, so shin pads for pre-season? For training. This, training? Yeah, training. Oh, right. Oh, Chris, but only, this is only... Like this. This is only he, he, he's a big fan of I was say, we're so bonding. This is only for the first, you know... The the, first, yeah, I went yeah. in, I think there was 14 <laughs> games to go. Something like that. Might all be 12, 14 right. games, QPR, in, in relegation problem. So... I'm watching this game and, and the, I've got a member of staff at side. I mean, he's telling me, that's who's, who's that? That's so-and-so. Who's that? That's so-and-so. That's so. so this is a red hot day, first day, and there's a kid with black gloves on. Black woolen gloves. <laughs> and I says, who's that with gloves on? The guy says, you don't want to know him, Gaffer. <laughs> so what do you mean? He says, that's Tarab. He says, he's a Moroccan. He's on, from Tottenham, he said. He'll get you the sack. I said, who what? He'll get you the sack. He's already got manager of the sack. We, waste of space. All oh, right. So I watched this game and QPR couldn't score goals then. That's what the problem was. So I'm watching this kid. Wow, I've never seen her like Summer's ability. But what he was doing, he was getting a ball off centre half, not making somebody, losing it, and they were scoring. Mm. Are you with me? So, so I thought, well, I've got, you, you sometimes get feelings as a manager. I'm sure they do as a player. But as a manager, you get gut feelings. I just liked him. Straight away, with his gloves and all that, and he's, he's got that little bit of arrogance. Mm. So I, I pulls him over after, on the pitch, pulls him over and he's got his gloves on. I said, are you cold? Are you cold at home? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, all right, sorry. You know. So I says to him, we play West Brom on Saturday. Top of the league. You're my first game? Yeah. I'm going to play you on Saturday. Do you understand? And if you're shite, I'm going to play you the next game. <laughs> and if you're shite... I'm going to play you the next game. Do you understand? <laughs> He's thinking, if I'm shy, I'm going to be playing. So I said, do you understand? Yeah. I said, because you are going to save us. All right? So, anyhow, 
So then I got all the other lads without him, and I said to the lads, right, anybody gives him the ball in our half, it's a 50 quid fine. <laughs> right? That is true. Anybody gives the ball to him in our half, 50 quid fine. And I said to Adele, Adele, if you come over the halfway line and pick a ball up, I fine you 50 pounds, okay? So nobody passed him. I think one player passed him and we fined him 50 quid, but that was it. Nobody passed him. But you give him the ball in that half. Oh, my God. Mm. So then I, when we'd stayed up and then we went next year, we got promotion. But the next year, in the summer, I signed people like I had Clint Till, Sean Derry, and mm. people like that. The QPR fans thought they were an idiot for signing these has-beens. Are you with me? Mm. But I knew what they could do. And I pulled them all. Helgerson up front. What a good target. What a player. And I, I, I brought him back. He was on loan at Watford when I first went there and I brought him back and he's thinking I'm going to sack him, you know, I'm going to tell him his contract's up and he's going and I brought him back from his loan, not to play because I couldn't, I just brought him back and said, Haider, next year you're going to get me a promotion. I just wanted to tell you face to face, not on the phone. He thought he was going to get the sack and next year he bought, I don't know how many goals he scored. Mm, but, oh, brilliant. Close. So I, I, I got them all together and I said to them, listen, I'm going to make a Dell captain. All right. I know you should be captain, you should be captain, you should be captain. There were five or six captain. I said, but if I can get 10 or 20% more out of Adele, he'll get us all promotion and you'll all get good contracts. Mm. So you've got to bear with me. We had a couple of, you know, we had a couple of hair-raising spells during the season, but he got us promotion. Mm. He, was unbelievable. Gloves, he was but unbelievable. He was but I, unbelievable. I, I, I played with him at Tottenham and, yeah. and I was like, how is this kid not in the team? He was an unbelievable talent, but yeah. like you say, he just had those, he was losing the ball in the wrong areas. And yeah. it, it, at times, he'd rather get a nutmeg than score. But did mm. the gloves stay on? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, do what you want if you get me up. <laughs> <laughs> you get me in promotion, was, you can wear long johns and all, I said to him. <laughs> so, But I think the thing is, and then he went to Benfica for, he got a really good contract and he, he still texts me about two years ago saying, you know, Gaffer, I'm fit again. I'm, if you want me to come back, I will come back and play. I think, it was a, I, think I was at Middlesbrough. And uh, I will come back and he, he looks quite fit again now. But he had so much ability. Is he one of yeah. your favourites, would you say? Like, there's always this thing with Harry Redknapp where mm. Crouchy was one of the mm. band. Yeah. You know, it's always get the band though, together. Like, yeah. who's, who's, who's your band? I always so, pick somebody like that, you know. Like at Sheffield United, Michael Brown had got kicked out of Man City, He'd gone to Portsmouth, they bombed him out. So I brought him in, are you with me? And I said to him, look, you've got, a, you've got a good career ahead if you listen to me. If you don't, you might as well go and play Sunday League. So I brought him in and I always had a favourite, always had a favourite, every club I've had, you know. And so I'd go out peeing down my rain and say, Michael, come on, son, get under this brolly while I talk to this lot. You know, and do you want, to, do you want some chewing gum, Michael? Are you with me? I won't give anybody But you, don't, you did it on purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Everywhere. And like he, even <laughs> Huddersfield last, week, like last year, you know, there were two or three favourites. Who's the favourite there? Uh, well, I, had a, I, had a, I called him Reg. Uh, but there, there, was, there was two or three favourites that couldn't do anything wrong for me. Are you with me? And the other lads used to. And basically, we never as a defender, really. Because defenders, I used to, you know, I used to really have a good defend. Anybody can bloody defend, you know, and all that lot. So I used to always pick somebody. With, I've said with, it for years on this podcast. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing I've been saying for yeah. years. Goalkeepers as well. Just keep yeah. that in there. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was always, but Adele, he was just, you know, I was very lucky with him. And so he, he, he did things. I mean, for example, he, he was a nightmare. One, I, I remember we played, we, we were... It, I mean, to get promotion, if you ever get a chance, watch a film called The Four Year Plan. Yeah. It's, on, it. it's on YouTube, and you'll see I'm working with Flavio Briatore and Bernie mm. Eccleston, etc. cetera. Are you with me? And to get success with, with, with in charge, them in charge, it was unbelievable. And in the, in the pre in the, um, in the preseason, when, when you looked at, at, at all at what we had to, to blend that together, are you with me? was just amazing. I just, I, I think about, we went to, uh, on Easter, we played Barnsley and Scunthorpe on the Saturday and Monday. Mm. And we, we lost four, sorry, other way around, but we lost four nil at Scunthorpe. But anyhow, before we went to Scunthorpe, Adele come to see me. Gaffer, I need to go home. Oh, what's the matter, son? He said, I, I need uh, my best friend being shot. And I need to go see him and his mother. And I said, oh, bloody hell, that's more important. You get off home. And, you know, I'll speak to you on some blah, blah, blah. So we go to Scunthorpe, get beat 4-0. And I've got Flavio on the phone. You know, he must go. The manager must go. He doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, and all this lot. And he's telling Gianni. Palladino was brilliant with me. Mm. He says, uh, he's got to go. He, he's, 
he doesn't know he's lost it. You know, four nil against Gun, blah blah. So, because I spoke to Bernie Eccleston, I said, Bernie, we've only got ten games to go. You got. To, I'm telling you, I'm the one that's going to get you up. Nobody else. I know I'm inside out. Forget that. So he said, oh, just ignore him, Neil. He said, you know, just ignore him. So he's gone across to France, right? So I thought, so somebody brings me a passport in on the Saturday night. I said, what's this? Uh, Adele's passport. I said, where were that? We found it on the dressing room, on the floor in the dressing room. So I said, so how's he got to France? <laughs> so, of course, on the Sunday, I ring, I ring we, we, play, we play in uh, Barnsley on the Monday. So uh, on the Sunday, I ring Caroline, I think it's Car- yeah, my secretary, and I said to her, he's coming in, he's coming in this morning, Caroline. He's supposed to be. She said, yeah, he's, 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 he's in now. Right, I said, don't leave him. I said, go and see him. Don't let him go on his own. And, and he's, got to, he's got to come up to Barnsley now. He's got to play on Monday. So he, he, um, she goes and she says, well, he wants to go home now on his own. And I said, no, don't. I said, I want you to follow him. If he's going to go on his own, follow him in a car. And then I want you to put him in your car and I want to bring him to Barnsley. All right? Well, Caroline following him here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so he, uh, he, and yeah, they, they got him up to Barnsley. And I said, oh, how did your weekend go? Poor out it. I said, Adele, terrible about you. How, is your friend okay? Yes, he, he's okay, a lot better and blah, blah. I said, did you have a good week? Did you have a good, over, you know, two couple of nights? Yeah, very good. I said, oh, good. Here, do, you, do you want your passport, Max? And he looked at me. I said, I said, how did you get home? He went, I, I said, I don't want to know. Don't want to know. You'd better score tomorrow. Or you gonna, I'm going to absolute <laughs> hammer you, right? He scored within four minutes. And it was like, we never had a kick after that. We're like, we won 1-0 and, they, and we, they battered us, Barnsley. We won 1-0 and that's when we went up. I knew we'd go up then. Wow. And, and, and yeah, you know, so yeah, you know, you had to, you have to deal with things like that. And, and a, a normal person would have just fined him two weeks. Where you just, used it as motivation. You, yeah. you had this in your back pocket to be able to whip yeah. out. And yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes you have to treat players with, with, with differently. You yeah. know, if they've got that much talent, if, they're gonna, if you're going to achieve big, bigger, bigger, better things with them, then yeah. you have to treat them differently. Uh, at at um, Palace, uh, I remember when I got there, we got no pace in the team. And I shouted Gary Isitov, who was an academy guy. And I said, Gary, have you got any players that's got pace? He said, yeah, I said, I said, he said, one over there, Sean Scannell, one over there, Victor Moses. They did not. I said, are they, are they good enough to come in the team? Oh, no, 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 not yet, no. All oh, right. So I shout some over them to so come over. And I said, lads, um, you're not played in anywhere near the first. No, not yet. I said, uh, are you good enough? To, uh, Victor never said, oh, Victor. You know, nodded his head and Sean said, I said, uh, you're both playing. You're both playing next game. They couldn't believe what I was saying, really. And then they both had good careers. At, um, yeah. I mean, Victor. We played with Victor. Yeah. I remember Victor, right? So I, I, we go to Cardiff and uh, we're playing into Peanut Down. We're in midweek. And Victor's frustrated me because he's got everything. And I said to him before the game, listen, Victor, th- tonight's a big night for you because I'm telling you now, if you don't pull your finger out, you're going to be playing for Boreham Wood. No disrespect to Boreham Wood. I think they're a good team. But I did say Boreham Wood. <laughs> I said, you're going to be playing for... No, I didn't. Bromley. Sorry, Bromley. I said, you're going to be playing for Bromley. Now, it's up to you. I said, you should go to the top with what you've got. But if you carry on, um, you know, gloves on, and you're doing this, that, and other, you're not going to get to the top. And it's a waste. So you say... Anyway, anyway we played at Cardiff. Peen down with rain, floodlights. I can see it now. He was out of this world, Victor. I've got goose pimples now, talking. And I goes on the pitch after... And I put my arm around it, and then we all wet through. You know what we're like. Water's coming off me now and all that. Put my arm around him and says, welcome. That's the first game of your career. And I've got yeah. goosies here. Right. So just to go further on, so he, he goes to Chelsea, doesn't he? And he goes to yeah. African Cup of Nations yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And he gets, he gets the <clears throat> man of the, uh, the whole African Nations, right? And I text him. I don't know what time it was. I texted him within five minutes to end at game, the final game, Nigeria. And I texted him, Hiya, Victor, congratulations. Remember Cardiff? And I'm telling you now, within five minutes, he replied to me. Never forget Cardiff, Gaffer, thanks. And that's the difference between somebody there or somebody. And there's so many careers gone that way because they've not had any guidance or they've not had anybody push him. Are you with me? Mm. Because every, a lot of people have got ability, but you need more than ability. 
So we, yeah, on this podcast, we've been talking about pre-seasons recently as well. Like, what would a Neil Warren at pre-season look like? Um, probably five weeks. Five. It used to be six weeks, but five weeks now because lads just keep themselves so good, don't they, over the summer now? So five weeks, we'd come in and have four or five days without the ball, um, <laughs> stre- lo- load of stretching, a lot of cycling. No cycling, no. I thought you love your cycling, mate. Though, don't you're you? talking about me, not the players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I cycle. Yeah. yeah, I'll be cycling pre-season. Have you seen the videos of Neil cycling? Yeah, I've mm. seen it. Yeah, he's changing the bloody subject. <laughs> no, sorry, because I've just remembered. <laughs> I've just remembered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that just whilst, just very quickly whilst we're on that, that video of you cycling and then the lads come past and they can't believe they're seeing you cycle. I know they're taking me on the on a, on a telephone as they go past. That's one. Go back again. Go go again. Go again. You know, it's just you say then. No, I just, I just, I just waved to him. Oh, that's all. Yeah. But I did one in Scotland when, uh, when they were the heat wave was on, and I just they said, "Would you do a, a, a little bit of a film for Twitter like that?" So I, I did one filming, and Sharon filmed it, and I, I did one, and I pulled up, and I said, um, "Be disciplined, you know. Make sure you have plenty of fluids." <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know about this Twitter. Make sure you got plenty of fluids down here, and when it's like this. So the next day, the lad who, who, who looks after me, the, like the Twitter thing, he says to me, uh, uh, Neil, you know that thing you sent last night? I said, yeah. He said, well, it had 750,000 in the first hour. <laughs> he says, and this morning it's had 2.5 million wow. hits. I said, how sad are people? <laughs> how sad are people? Looking at I that. I was one of them. <laughs> I was one of them. I've been watching it now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but so we went off the subject there for yeah, so, me cycling. So pre-season. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I'll have four or five days just with stretching, really, and and doing all the exercises, and then we do we have hurdles. I always have hurdles. I have two lots of hurdles around a four forty yards, and it's under, over, under to break the stride up. Yeah. That's all. And I do four or five of them, and then the fitness guy will say that's enough for. And I said, oh, is it? Right. Right, one more, lads. And if you beat your fastest time, you finish. If not, we do another one. And I used to do that. I was scared. And everyone would beat the time. Yeah. So it's just psychologically. And I said, I'd said to yeah. a fitness guy, oh, so are you surprised at that? I thought, they don't. You know, they all come and say to me, they've had enough, Gaffer. I think, well, I'll tell you when they've had enough. <laughs> you know. So, you know, everything's da- data now, isn't it? You know, everything's in the modern, which is rubbish. Really. I know it sounds good. Well, but it, it's, I think, and then we, we'd go, after that week, then we go, you know, we're in the game straight away. By the end of the week, we're playing um, games between ourselves and things like that. And then the following week, we'll have a good week of football. And then always, we went away and I took them down to Cornwall most of the time. Mm. And we'd have three games against non-leaguers, Bodmin, Tavistock. Uh, people I've been down there, played those games. Ah, yeah. I love it, I love it. And so, I always took them Liscard and places like that. And what I liked about that is then... The lads that stayed at St. Melian Golf Club and, uh, and Orchardthorne and, and they'd all have a good time with the golfing. They'd get plenty of time off. Are you with me? And, but then when we played, I made sure that when we played before the game and after the game, they'd be on the pitch signing autographs, having photographs. Are you with me? Yeah. Because people don't in Cornwall don't get to see top yeah. teams very often. And I always wanted, I thought it was my, you know, almost, you know, my right to make sure that the, mm. the Cornish people did and Devon. So I always took them down there. And, uh, and then we'd have three games against teams, come back up. They'd all play golf two or three times uh, while we were down there. We had a barbecue at our house where I used to cook barbecue you for, into them, that? for them all. Yeah. Are you good at the barbecue? Chris is a you keen uh, barbecue enthusiast. I love you, it. You, yeah. You yeah. Always had barbecue. Always. I See, never... There's a resemblance here. The shoe I'm, pads, I'm, the barbecue, oh, the cycling. Bonding well. I'm, I'm not oh. sure. I'm not really a steak man on no. barbecues I just like me you know uh, when I was at where was it now I remember the fitness guy again the nutritionist then mm. it might have been Palace or it might have been QPR anyhow he says to me when we're having a barbecue Neil we need rice and chicken and this that and I said you what you know, <laughs> rice and chicken and that and we tried it once and we did this and I thought what the hell so after that time I always said to him right lads who wants sausages and who wants burgers? And before we had it, I said, that's what we're going to have on, you know. Never had any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> you know. so I, I get the impression you're not a fan of, obviously, the, the, the fitness coaches and, and nutritionists. And I know we need them. You. I know we need yeah. them, Peter. I do, I think, you, you know, when you look at where I started, 1980, everything changed with, yeah. with Wenger. Wenger was amazing. Mm. He 
change the whole concept in football. Not just what you eat, the fitness regime, everything. When you read his book, I mean, I, I've been away for two weeks in this last few weeks, and I read his book, and I mean, I could not be as dedicated as him. He's dedic he was de his life mm. is dedicated to the detriment of his family, I think, at times. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm. And I read his book, but I was so interested in reading his book. But he forced change, didn't he? Ah. he did. And it's interesting that you also point to that chapter where, where Wenger came in and, and football changed, and, and the lads have spoken about this at length before. What, what do you think has been your biggest impact on the game? My biggest impact? I, don't, I think the only thing about myself is... You can have all the coaching manuals, and we talked about the fitness guys, and they can have all the degrees and all this and all that and all this. And you modern guys, are you youngsters? It's all data and all that. Lot. But do you know, 90, 90, 95% of being successful is man management, mm -hmm. is getting the best out of what you've got, whether you run a garage, a corner shop, whatever. Get the best out of your staff. And I think that's where I why I've had so many successes. Because you look at all my promotions, we were never the best team. Never in a million years. But you won't want to play us. And I think, I think the biggest compliment I ever get from people is when they say to me, and I always say to my lads, you know, if you had, a, if you had a, um, ask all the managers who they don't want to play against, I bet you I'm top at list in the championship. When whoever I'm with, because they don't want to play. Because like Steve said, they knew going to be bloody hard work today. Whoever were we, are you with me? And that's, that was the kind of compliment because mm. I've never, never been, never had a name good enough to get a job at the top and take a team like that. Are you with me? I've always had to scrap around. But I've enjoyed it. And I think when supporters come up to you and say, I've got to say, I never liked you, but I'm, but I'm glad you're managing us now. Are you with me? That type of thing. And I think that's the biggest compliment you could Would get. Would you say that is your super strength going into all the clubs that you've done and just localising man management so so I know he needs this so you're reading people quite quickly you're standing yeah. on the side you're watching training you're going right he needs this he'll need a bollocking he'll need an arm around him yeah. he'll need to be left alone yeah you, you, that, I think that's I think that's what's, what I've built my success on yeah. if I'm honest Steve I think I think when you go in a place you've got to find a winning formula but you've also You've got to get that dressing room where I know within two weeks that if that ball comes down during a game, we're not going to lose it. Mm. And I know because he won't play again if he loses a tackle or a header. Are you with me? And he knows it. Yeah. And the other lads know it. So I think it's just getting that. Because at every club, there's, there's skillful players and good players. But it's just getting that balance, isn't it, to play. I mean, he would have loved playing for me. Him. Only because, not because of it, but because... He would bring everybody and everybody the way we played. You know, like I said to you about the, you know, you look at the the top teams now playing short balls everywhere. Well, I don't. I, I see us playing. I like playing football in the other half. That's what. I, that's what my only problem. I don't like playing in my. I like playing in their half, and I don't see any reason why that's wrong, mate. Right, you know how this works. When a guest is so spectacular, like Neil Warnock was just then, uh, we put it into two parts because you're going to want to hear the rest of it. Uh, so stay tuned. Next week, more Neil Warnock coming up. <laughs>